All right, this is uh, one of the, the final weeks of my research with uh, ICAT and uh, showing you what is going on uh, so far. Uh, again, this is going to continue on through the summer uh, and then uh, hopefully in October we have something to showcase either in Perform or in the ICAT Cube. Uh, but I do like go walking through these videos just to kind of self-document uh, the process that I do. I know uh, no one watches these, but uh, this is just a real quick uh, review on uh, the process of 3D printing these things. It's, a, it's quite a, a, a pain, and so I uh, saw it there in uh, ZBrush. Um, there's a lengthy process just in ZBrush to uh, produce STL, uh, make sure everything's watertight, and then uh, take it into a mesh mixer to uh, cut and dice it up. And that way, uh, whatever 3D printer it goes to, we know exact scale and dimensions of this. So this is very key when we start to uh, think about um, scale and VR, because it's got to be exact one-to-one -one ratio. We may have to go back and do some 3D scanning uh, once we make the mounts for this, uh, how it's mounted and how it goes to the tracker. Uh, that may have to be uh, scanned uh, in the library here at VT. We may have to scan it and give a rough estimate where the tracker is sitting in space. So anyways, this is uh, just me trying to figure out uh, the size. I'm, I'm not the greatest at centimeters and millimeters I'm trying to figure out the size. So uh, as we're Going up to, this is the seventh form that you see right here, or seventh character. Uh, the next one's going to be, be even bigger. So this one's pretty big. So this is uh, taking a long time. It's almost taking a full month. And I got a, a under past undergrad student, uh, Jesse, uh, working on this. And so uh, it's just taking a, a, a lot of segmenting and a lot of printing. So each one of these little tabs that you see here is broken up into three sections, or actually four sections, and each of these tabs is taking up to four or five days each. So you can multiply four times eight, so it's like about th 32 days just to do the flower section on the top here. Uh, the base section was done earlier. That was about a two-week process too. So uh, a long uh, process, but uh, you'll see later in the video how big this form is. But again, the the reason that we're going with the 3D printing is try to get uh, the the precision of of the form um, and make sure that's echoing uh, in the VR simulation. So when you reach out and touch this, it's really a one to one ratio. So we haven't really tested that out yet. We're still uh, hoping that this is going to work out, but uh, worst case scenario, we'll go in and hand scan and make some uh, adjustments on the fly uh, in either Maya uh, with the, the, the generic uh, base mesh uh, or uh, Unreal and so forth. So anyways, uh, this is just uh, breaking up in a uh, mesh mixer, you can see uh, all the different layers there. I'm kind of selecting and tabbing them through. Uh, again, uh, just the process. So after um, they are 3D printed uh, by Jesse, um, I take them um, and I do all the cleanup. Uh, I try to minimize the work effort uh, on the 3D printing, getting it prepped and then uh, printed, and then uh, it's up to me to do the cleanup and assembly. So. Uh, this is kind of the fun part, also the painful part, because uh, you know nothing ever really matches up perfectly. You still have to do uh, bondo, um, a lot of sanding. Uh, sometimes uh, the techniques that you see right here, where I'm using uh, Gorilla Super Glue, uh, if it's a nice tight fit, it'll work. And I guess through this time lapse, you'll see sometimes it doesn't work. I think. It ends up uh, over 90% of the Gorilla Glue ends up on my finger or my thumb, and I usually glue myself to the product, and uh, it sticks with me for a full week. Um, anyways, it's a very, very tedious uh, in the middle of the living room. Uh, I do it in the living room because of the temperature. 
a lot of waiting. And then we go back to using hot glue gun. I think uh, the hot glue gun was a key here. This was not sticking. Uh, this is the side uh, forms. I don't think there was any cleanup on that other than just removing the base. Uh, again, I don't even think I tried to do super glue. I just used a glue gun to kind of hold it in shape, and then I used a poster board to hot glue it down to the poster board so it didn't flex in and out. And then I just realized I'm just going to go ahead and uh, bondo this together. So you see, I trimmed it up the paste uh, the poster board so it wouldn't take up so much room, and then uh, just slapped on some bondo. And unfortunately, uh, when I did this process, I, the, what you see right here, I did not mix the Bondo with the right uh, catalyst, and it never kicked off. So I had to scrape it all off, sand it off, and get it off. So, so this is the second part of the 3D printing uh, it's a, uh, on Jesse's 3D printer. Uh, I think each of those uh, ear forms that you saw there is about 12 hours, and this form that you see right here, 22 hours. So. Uh, there's a lot of wear and tear on this machine. Hopefully uh, this machine survives throughout this whole process, but hopefully we'll be able to buy a new one soon uh, to help out with that. So anyways, here is the form. You can see me uh, cleaning up uh, all the extra material that was the support in between. And uh, so I get these wonderful texts showing uh, updates on the form so you can see. Uh, it's not symmetrical. It's each uh, ear is a little bit different when I printed out uh, or when I was in uh, Maya. I kind of tilted them here and there so they're a little bit different. So it's not repetitive. So we're all, we're almost done here. Uh, you know, we we still have another twenty more days to of printing, but uh, you can see kind of what this is going to look like. It's huge. It's a pretty good size. So this is going to take the very large uh, gimbal. Uh, and also that gimbal arm uh, that you wear uh, on your chest uh, that will support 50 uh, to 60 pounds and it's uh, used for heavy camera gear like uh, the RED or very high-end uh, cameras. So uh, slowly we're getting um, Vive trackers. They're slowly coming back on the market uh, with the COVID uh, virus. Uh, everything that is stand still waiting for equipment we're still working waiting on one more uh, Vive base 2.0 um, we have three um, so once we get four the tracking will be pretty good right here this is a, a formal grad student uh, working on the tracking of the, the, the tracker within uh, Unreal um, still working out the kinks but I think that was just the first iteration uh, you can see here uh, just a real quick uh, thing of what the form looks like in uh, Maya. And I think I'm just doing a real quick explanation uh, of what is animated or needs to be animated uh, down the road. And we're talking about the different zones. I'm kind of just like rubbing uh, or cursing over the sections, talking about. Uh, the person be touching it and what will trigger off. So I'm passing along information to uh, uh, Daniel. And so uh, we are using Google Drive to pass uh, a lot of this data, using it as a, a way of documenting and just dumping files, a lot of files. So you can see uh, the OBJs to FBXs to the textures of this form. So um, Thank goodness this is uh, available uh, during this crisis. Uh, if there wasn't uh, a way of organizing this and handing off very heavy files, uh, this uh, project would be dead in the water still. Um, anyways, you're going to see normal maps, diffuse maps, uh, opacity, occlusion uh, maps here, and these are all just kind of thrown into uh, Unreal. And I think you've seen previous uh, videos on how complex it is to bring in these textures and to create uh, transparency with this is uh, a challenge too. There's also opacity map uh, on these. Um, 
so part of part of this first one, this is the first uh, form that interacts with you. It's a pod. It's just kind of a, kind of a very simple animation with this. We're trying to keep them simple for the first year iteration of this project. Uh, again, they're going to get more and more complex, hopefully, as we get down the road uh, with this and get more funding. Uh, but you can see uh, that four-leaf clover is going to spin around. So when you touch a, a certain aspect of that pod, it's going to trigger off uh, the flower to go around in a circle. And so that flower, this is the textures for that. And again, this is there is uh, two surfaces on that flower. There's an outer and an inner ring to it. And you can see the diffuse maps, normal maps. And uh, I think there's an opacity map somewhere in there. So create the transparency. And so we're finding out with the transparency uh, with Unreal, it, it's a little bit more challenging to create shadows. So as this uh, form is spinning around, uh, it's going to be difficult to see uh, the shadows created by that. It would probably just kill the frame rate if we do figure it out. So, so these are the things that long term in five years will hopefully address. But right now we're just trying to get this as a working product and not really work worry about all the um, different aspects of it. Again, uh, this is this was just a video I made of what you're seeing right here uh, explaining uh, what the file structure is. So I can hand that off to uh, Daniel and he can quickly grab the files and have a clear understanding. So typically I, I show what the image looked like when I had it in Unreal and that way we're all on the same page. So I'm, I'm literally explaining everything here, uh, showing uh, where the our support videos are and so forth. Um, so just quickly, you can see the animation, how it spins around. And so we. Uh, Go on to the next section. We're in Unreal now, and uh, Daniel's done an amazing job of lighting the scene. Um, this was done previously. You'll, you're going to see as he uh, pans up. Again, I have not seen this in um, a head mount display yet. It's always been just within a, a the the viewer within Unreal. Um, but so far, the lighting is is pretty pretty amazing. Um, so you can see the form in there, and you can imagine that form right there is, you know, attached to a real physical form, and the puppeteer is moving in front of you. So you're going to see uh, this form, and uh, the textures are pretty amazing uh, for what it is. You know, it's just, again, this is a, a real quick project for one year, but I'm really excited about seeing uh, all that uh, hard work with the texturing, uh, and now with the lighting and everything coming together is pretty exciting. So one of the first tasks is to figure out the coding of just simple interactions with it. So as the puppeteer is moving the, the character, this pod character in front of you, uh, we want it to do basically five or six things uh, to create some sort of immersive experience. And so uh, we've got a phaser trigger that talks to the pogo pen. So we have these buttons that we're going to uh, send out a signal, and so before we get that working, we're just doing numeric key, numeric keys right now, and uh, Daniel's programming, you can see by pressing 2, we'll fade the lighting over time, and uh, so you can see what this looks like in blueprints, very complicated, um, so he is, is tackling a lot of amazing stuff here, uh, not sure how he does it. Uh, he's definitely going to have to give me some pointers on the road, or or maybe I just don't go down <laughs> this road and try to learn it. But anyways, you can kind of see what he's doing is hitting too. You can see see uh, the lights within that system fading in and out. So as so once we start puppeteering this and we're building up the scene, we can uh, 
we can fade in the, the lights in and out uh, in real time. So number three uh, is the audio. So once we hit three, it can make a bang or whatever a trigger sound uh, within the environment. Four is a particle effect. So you, you saw the overall scene is particles. So, uh, but I think the particles will be uh, character uh, driven. So there'll be particles moving on that one character that we saw earlier. But right now this is just making the, the particles in the scene turn on and off. And you can see that uh, when he's hitting the button. All right, so now we're getting uh, up to the fifth key. And so this is a, a normal map of uh, strength. And so I thought it'd be kind of cool uh, that uh, once you go up to the, touch the surface or in a certain area that uh, the normal maps or the height of the surface would change. So uh, again, these are just really simple ideas. Uh, once we go into uh, workshopping this and, and working with the puppeteer and the sound people and the singers, uh, this may be just silly, uh, just kind of throwing stuff out there and seeing how this is going to make the object more immersive or interactive. So uh, right now this is pretty cool. He's just hitting the, the toggle number five and he'll be able to turn on and off uh, the normal map so it'll, it'll diffuse down and diffuse up. So again, amazing job with uh, programming this in uh, Blueprints. So you can see it's kind of a node-based uh, structure uh, where you create these, uh, this system. All right, so this is a, some, uh, a second iteration of this and now uh, getting all these things to work onto the pod, not just the scene. Um, so he's added a, a some uh, new features to it so uh, now we can actually see uh, the normal map so you can see those little warts uh, <laughs> go from being a wart to, to a flat surface so could you imagine like being really close to that form and touching a certain area of that form and being able to change that surface quality I think that's going to be pretty cool so he's also got the I think the next one is a hue change and you can see the, the button goes from a green to a purple. And again, we have to workshop this. So as it's changing color, the puppeteer with the sound uh, will be bending that sound to react to that color change too. And you just saw another button. This is making the animation go from uh, transparent to uh, kind of an opacity uh, up to 100%. Again, the, the form is transparent. I think Daniel is concerned about the, the shadow not showcasing uh, on top of the pod here, but again, this is our first uh, draft, so uh, I'm pretty excited what it looks like. So, And I think he's got it where you hit the button again and it fades out. So we have the option of six buttons, and so we'll have lighting systems uh, for this pod. Um, I think that'll be the next thing of, of how the rig uh, lighting for it so when it travels around it's specific to this pod uh, so that's what we have so far pretty exciting